I didn't really want to make this video, but here's the truth about Chase Hudson, aka Lil Huddy. So June 2019, the Lights Out tour came to Portland, Oregon, where I was living. And before then, Chase and I were both talking as friends, you know, we both thought we were attractive and we would text like that, you know, whatever, it was consensual. Before the meet and greet the next day, Chase and the other boys were staying in a hotel like five minutes from my apartment from where I was living and he was like, hey, you should come over. And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And I was just hanging out with him and the boys and then he went to his room and he was in there for a while and so I thought he wasn't okay so I went to go check on him. And he did some stuff then that I wasn't okay with. I didn't say no because I was scared that he was going to tell all of his friends in the Lights Out tour that I was annoying or like whatever. It's just the power dynamic, honestly, someone who has status against me. <laughs> And then I went to the tour next day, and I just worked the merch table. I tried to ignore what I was feeling the next day because I wanted the boys to think I was cool or whatever, and I didn't want to darken the mood part too soon. And then a couple days after, he blocked me on everything. I just felt and still feel super betrayed and used. Because we were actually pretty good friends before, and we were talking a whole bunch before this happened. And then he did something to me, he got what he wanted, and then he blocked me. He was someone that I went to for advice and he came to me for advice and I just feel really used. I honestly don't know why he blocked me afterwards. Maybe he felt guilty. Maybe he just wanted to use me. I'm not sure. So three years later, I finally took up the courage to do something about it. So I texted his friend Maddie Williams. She's also on this app. I just said, hey, can you get in contact with Chase? I really need to talk to him. Thanks Maddie for being a good support. And I was like, if he doesn't contact me, then I'm going to out him. I really don't want to, but he's not talking to me. And I literally have nightmares, and I still think about it, and it hurts a lot. <laughs> Chase, if you're saying this, please talk to me. Even though we were texting like that, or Snapchat or whatever, it's that's not consent. The power dynamic between him and I just makes things a lot worse. And it felt like I wasn't able to speak up on it because it would ruin his career or whatever. And it made me feel like I couldn't say no because I didn't want to embarrass him in front of all his friends or whatever because they were right in the next room. But even if someone has status, that doesn't excuse or cover up anything that they've done to people. It's both a consent issue and a bad friend issue. <laughs> to this day, it's affected me in the way that I have a lot of trouble trusting people now, not just romantically, but especially with friends and just feeling like I'm getting used a lot and it's all my fault somehow. This isn't a hate video towards him, but it is a truth video, I guess. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, I guess. Okay, this is what I was talking about, the whole ending his career thing. Like, his career is more important than what happened. But yeah, of course that's not his fault for not knowing what I was feeling or going on inside his brain because, you know, I didn't tell him. And that totally makes sense, that's not his fault. But it is his fault for faking, or what it seemed to be faking, being my friend just to take advantage of me and then block me on everything afterwards. That's the part I'm more concerned about and it just shows a lot about his character and I feel like people need to know about that. And the reason why I didn't say anything about his character like that was because of, you know, ending his career or whatever. And there's a larger scope to this, not relating to Chase, but any person has status over another person. It could be a boss, it could be a mentor, anything like that. It doesn't need to be related to anything sexual, but just being a bad person, a bad friend, and they think that they can cover it up with ending a career, you know? That's why I think it's so important to talk about. I just want to make this to clarify a couple things. We were both minors, so don't come at him like that. Also, I really do not believe in cancel culture. I think it's unproductive to a certain extent. And the main goal for posting these videos for me was that I finally felt that I could speak up about it two years later. It takes a lot of time for people to come out with things that have hurt them. And believe me, I have tried to get in contact with him, so this didn't have to be public. But the reason why I made this so public is because he will not contact me. And all the comments saying that I'm doing this for clout really do justify, you know, a big reason with big creators and how they are able to cover up what they do. Also, these comment sections have brought up a really big problem in our generation about consent, and I think we need to focus on that more. And clarifying why I brought up why I wanted to quote-unquote look cool in front of the guys is to more talk about the power dynamic.